So, uh, we're going to get a little uh, more serious here because um, going back to uh, going back to Dayton on this day and what have you, we have the uh, the twenty first of April, right? My daughter's birthday. Your daughter's yeah, birthday. That's my daughter's birthday. <laughs> congratulations! I think that's the only. Well, it's got nothing to do with me. Actually, it does have a lot to do with me. <laughs> yes, congratulations, <laughs> me. The nothing else happened of importance on that day. Nothing. You know at who all. said that quote? Who? That was King George the Third, on the day that the American Revolution was proclaimed. Right. He was in London. Mm-hmm. Obviously, didn't know. Was writing in his diary. Nothing of any importance happened today. He wrote that in his diary. Yeah. Okay. King George the Third of England. 17- Next to his notes for Uber, you find that one. Seventeen seventy six. He writes that. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. So. This is um, the twenty first of April. Is um, uh, the what we call the junta, right? So when we talk a little bit about what that is, the junta, yeah. So you have got to pronounce the, ch- the junta. The word is actually what the word Spanish. Yeah, it's word Spanish yeah. and it's spelled with a J. It's actually yeah. junta. Junta. You hear a lot of Australians say, "Oh, you know, well, what were you people doing during the junta?" <laughs> yeah. And my response is, oh, "I wasn't nothing, doing nothing. I wasn't born yet. <laughs> nothing of interest. Nothing of interest happened that day." <laughs> now the junta or junta. Mm. or dictatoria, or however, however else you want to uh, mm. call it, is a very, very, very sad and ridiculous period in modern Greek history. Right, It okay. didn't have to happen, and it did because of Cold War paranoia. And it happened because the CIA, and this has been discovered through the research that a very courageous and incisive journalist called Alexandros Papagelas has done okay. in the CIA archives, mm-hmm. decided that the democratic forces in Greece were a Cold War risk. Okay. And we're referring to Yorgos Papandreou Sr. Mm-hmm. Yorgos Papandreou Sr. is called Ogerondas Dimokratias, the grandfather mm-hmm. of democracy, because mm-hmm. after the uh, Germans left Greece, he was the first person to raise the flag, oh. the, the Greek flag over okay. the Acropolis. And uh, he was an interesting politician because he was kind of a prototype for his father, Andreas Papandreou, founder of, Pasok, Papa. <laughs> so he was very charismatic, mm. very interesting. He was uh, or originated in the Venizelos faction. Okay. So he was one of Venizelos' people mm. back in the day. And then he went off on his own after Venizelos died and all mm-hmm. those things. And he loved promising things. He would say, I love being in opposition because I can say and do whatever I want and I'm not accountable. <laughs> it was that kind of guy. But he did have some he points that he was... Uh, one of them was opening up the democracy okay. because it was the Cold War. There was the problem with the king at the time mm-hmm. who was uh, meddling continuously with the constitution with political affairs. And this is something that all the prime ministers of Greece had to deal with and found them annoying, including Karamanlis, Konstantinos mm-hmm. the first, who really, really had a bad relationship with uh, Queen Frederica, the last king's mother, because of the meddling of the king. Kings could appoint their own prime ministers. They meddled with the... Uh, with the elections, they meddled with the parties, they ele- they meddled with appointments. It was really annoying. Yeah, it's a very funny thing. We tend to think, because we are born and raised here, I tend to think of kings having being limited in power pretty much the same way, you know, the Queen is. And even though the Queen can dismiss a Prime Minister tomorrow, uh, usually Prime Ministers are appointed by Cabinet, aren't they? So if she, even if she, dis- you know, she can't appoint her own, can in she? In Greece, back in the day... The king could refuse to appoint someone. Okay. So it was a problem. Mm. Now, there was a situation in 1967 mm. where there were elections and Yorgos Papandreou was poised to win. Mm. The problem with that was that his son, Andreas Papandreou, mm-hmm. a uh, American educated economics professor, yeah was going to win as well. And Alex, and uh, he was considered very radical, very out there, and a security risk. Okay. The CIA did not want that party to win. The king did not want that party to win. The king was already, King Constantine, mm-hmm. the last king of Greece, was already in negotiations with America about staging a coup of his own to prevent the elections to stop him from winning because they didn't get on. Right. The Americans told him, no, wait, you can't do this coup. Didn't tell him why. The reason why was because they were already talking to a few colonels in the Greek army who had formed a group previously called Aspida, 
and they were very pro-American, very anti-Bolshevik, very anti-discussing uh, mm. opening up the country to democracy or anything like that. Mm-hmm. They had been behind political murders in the past, including the murder of a peace activist Grigorios Lambrakis in the early 60s. He was a peace activist and he was murdered by that group. And that's where you get that famous movie uh, Z or Z. Yes. So it's got to do with that. Right. And these colonels seize power on the 21st of April, 1967. And they're a farcical and stupid bunch of people. <laughs> and uh, indeed, Eleni Vlachu, who was the owner of the Kathimerini newspaper, yeah. uh, called uh, one of them a clown. And the resu- as a result of that, she was put under house arrest. Right. I mean, how, how petty is that? You call someone a clown. She called Stilianos Patakos, who was one of the colonels, right. a clown, house arrest. She actually fled mm. uh, and went to London. Right. And from there, along with Melina Mercuri, mm. who we all know from her activism with the Parthenon and mm. her film Never on a Sunday, mm. she also went to London. She had her citizenship stripped away from her by the colonels because wow. of her anti-junta activism. Yeah. Now, the colonels were a particularly dense and stupid bunch of people. So the first thing they did was that they banned public gatherings yes. of more than three people. I remember my uncle telling me this. You know, social distancing was invented by <laughs> us boys and girls, not by Dan Andrews. It was invented by the Hunda. Okay? Because yeah, democracy can be a very contagious thing. Yeah, you don't want to catch that wall. <laughs> so they do things like that, and they propagate this ideology of elas elinon christianon. Greece belongs to Greek Christians. Mm. So everyone else is out of the narrative. Mm. Everyone else has to espouse traditional values. Mm -hmm. Things like adultery was made illegal, even though the head colonel, uh, Yorgos Papadopoulos, was having an affair with another woman, dumped his wife and ended up with her. That was okay. He could do that, but no one else could. Mm. There were restrictions on what could be taught, what you could say. Mm. It was annoying. Mm. And if you were vociferous in your criticism of the regime, you Mm. were in prison, you were put under house arrest... You could be tortured, you could be beaten. It was not fun. It's not the kind of thing that you can subject a Greek to for very long because Greeks like to blow off steam. So this thing was a pressure cooker. Mm. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. These things are happening. Um, The other thing they did was they brought back that form of Katharevusa. And Katharevusa was the Greek language which was purified Mm. with an infusion of ancient words. Mm. And the funny thing about that was that the colonels couldn't speak it properly. (laughs) So even though they were propagating this, it was full of mistakes. And you remember that famous uh, video a few years ago with one of the golden dawners telling everyone to stand up because their leader, Michalou Yakos, was coming and said, Eyerthito. Um, and he was using Katharevusa in the wrong sense. It was exactly yeah. that. They it's didn't like know how to speak okay. the language. I it's like buggering up Shakespeare. I don't recall. The, okay. All it's right. like buggering up Shakespeare. I don't recall the video, but I'll take your word for it. Dost thou hath a light, maybe, <laughs> perchance? You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> like so whatever. That, and there's this famous video of Papadopoulos where he's saying, you know, he's likening Greece to a sick person. He's saying, we put the sick person in the cast. We wait to I take the cast this. off. Yeah. If the person can walk without a cast then we won't put a cast on. But mm. if they can't walk, we'll put the cast back on. It just sounds puerile and mm. stupid. And he was referring to the return back to a constitution and democracy when the evils of uh, Bolshevik encroachment would be over. Mm. The vast majority of Greek politicians refused to have anything to do with the Hunda. Karamanis fled to France. He yes. was there. A lot of the other people went here and then everywhere. Andreas, Papa Andreu, mm. was allowed to escape. Allowed to escape. He was arrested mm. and uh, the Hunda soldiers put a gun to his son's head. His George. son, George Papandreou yeah. Jr., who also was a Prime Minister of Greece because we like to keep things in the family. Uh, of course you know, we, we do. We don't have royal ruling no, families, no, but no, we no. definitely have clans. We love rule. dynasties. That's it. Cue, cue theme music? You don't have theme music. <laughs> oh, no. You know what? I could find, I'll probably find the sound bite. I think I'll you throw should. it in. <laughs> throw it in. Throw it in. So they do that. And actually, there was one of the guys who was advising the Hunda on behalf of the CIA was Gus Avrakotos. Yeah, you posted a picture you of would him know, too. You mm. would know Gus from that movie, Charlie Wilson's War, because he was very big, played a big role in the US involvement in Afghanistan, funding the Mujahideen against the Soviets. But before that, he was posted in Greece, mm. and he was an advisor to the colonels for the CIA. Now, Gus was born in America, 
but his parents were Greek. They were from Limno. Oh, so okay. he spoke the language. Mm-hmm. He got along well with them. And he said to them, the official message of the US government is, yes, let Andreas Papandreou go out into exile. Mm-hmm. And he did. The unofficial message is, kill the motherfucker because you're going to live to regret it. It's going to come back wow, and haunt you. Man. Yeah. Those words. Not my words, his words. Found that in the CIA archives, I would imagine. Yeah. So they did this and mm. in the beginning the Republic works, people saying, okay, if you're a crony, you get employed. Um, mm. Things are happening and people say, oh, don't lock the hunda, the trains were running on time. Things like that. Yeah, I've heard so many... Yeah, which, which m- for me m- is not a valid things. point because yeah. the trains always run on time with Metro trains. And yet, anyway. <laughs> That happens. The construction then, work, infrastructure or, work in, well, there were, in the, there in the were attempts yard, to do that. Stuff like that. There were attempts to do that. You get to a stage where Papadopoulos is seen to be, by the hardliners, too soft. And he keeps on doing <laughs> silly things like talking about a return to elections. Yes. So you are near this. Brigadier, you are near this. Mm. Has his own little coup, topples mm. Papadopoulos, and he goes on. And he's hardline. He's a fascist. Mm. He's a very scary, nasty individual. And the other thing he decides to do, because the Hyundai is such a great success mm. and everyone loves it so much, yeah. is he decides to export it. So he creates a coup in Cyprus. Yeah. And yeah. he yeah. gets this moron called Samson mm. to lead the uh, Cyprus Hyundai. Mm-hmm. Makarios goes into exile, who was the leader of Cyprus ever mm. since the uh, independence, 1960. And, of course, that is the trigger for the Turkish invasion mm. because Turkey is a guarantor power of the independence of Cyprus. The idea is that Greece has compromised the, impen- the independence of Cyprus by toppling the elected government. Mm-hmm. So they exploit the already growing fissures between the two communities, Greek and, Cip- and uh, Turkish, mm-hmm. and they land troops on the island. Now, they said it was to restore peace and protect the Turkish population, but yeah. it was a war of conquest and we brought it upon ourselves because of the junta. Right. Now, when that happened, the regime fell apart. Yeah. The regime collapsed. They had lost all credibility. Mm. The credibility had been uh, compromised a year before with the Politechnio, mm. when the students went into the Athens Polytechnic, barricaded themselves in there. That was in 74. The that was 73. Three, okay. And that was broken up by tanks. And then there's, there was an argument for years, did people actually die in, mm. during the Politechnio? People on the right say, no, they didn't. People on the left say, yes, they did. Yeah. And they did. People were killed, crushed yeah. by tanks and what have you. Mm. And uh, that's why every year on the 17th of November, which is when that happened, yeah. we celebrate uh, the death of the students by burnings, graffitings, and doing all sorts of other stupid vandal- uh, acts of vandalism to that building. That's excuses, because that is, man. That is the way out. Excuses for be- for behaving like absolute troglodytes. You're a fascist. <laughs> yes, you are. This is how we express our liberal democratic uh, worldviews. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. That. Now, but- so that's what happened in the Hundafell. Mm. It was a very stupid seven years. I think it was Bill Clinton who, when he became president, actually apologised for the CIA's involvement in the coup. Oh, okay. So America did it and up to it and apologised for it before so we were, found the stuff in the two, CIA. There were two Files. American-sponsored coups, the one with the colonels, which actually happened, mm-hmm. the one that they were considering with the king that never happened. Right. The king tried to make a comeback because the king so, in 67... Yeah, so go on. The it's king in 67 was there when the colonels were sworn in. Yes. And then the king tried to... Uh, create a counter coup in 1969 okay. and that failed miserably mm. and he fled and went to Rome mm. and then there was the uh, referendum mm-hmm. after the junta fell do we bring him back or not and he mm. lost that yeah which is why he remained in exile right so he was exiled in 69 because of his role in trying to organize the yeah, second yeah. coup then in 74 the Greeks basically said you know what we're done with you yeah, anyway no more, no more kings so no. we don't have kings anymore no okay and that's uh, except for Vasilis Garas King of Kings. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's it uh, with regards to the um, the twenty first. Do we, apart from uh, apart from actually talking about it, is there any uh, there any ceremonies, anything that the Greeks basically do on the twenty first of April? When you say Greeks, which Greeks here or there? 
Well, here, I don't think we do anything. But oh, no, they do. They do. The Mokritos, which is the uh, workers' union, they, they usually have an event about that. And I know the Greek schools teach it. Very important. That's why my kids come home from Greek school saying, Psomi, pedi, elefthere, pedia, elefthere, <laughs> Yeah. So, no, it is taught, and I think mm. it's important that that's taught. It is a very important part of Greek history. Mm. There was a lot of acti- activism here during that time. That galvanized people. Oh, really? There were protests outside the Greek embassy. Uh, Neos Cosmos, the newspaper, was mm. very, very strongly anti hunda mm-hmm. And uh, you, it, it provided a focus for people. Mm. The music of the time, Thodorakis' music, yes. the Kotsi singing, it, yes. it really, which is stuck in yeah. people's memory. And I think I'm old enough to have caught the tail end of that. wasn't right. born at that time, just mm. after. But that music was still being spoken, mm. uh, sung, and these things were being discussed, and it was all new. We really do have to discuss uh, the role that the art plays in, in, in political situations well, like um, that. I, mean, I know that artists very, try today to very, do it. Very, very, Not very good, no, to be very, honest. But back then they back were. Back then, for example, you had people like Andonis Samarakis writing Zititelpis, uh, stories about people's alienation and loneliness during the Hunda. Mm. And these are things that we studied at Greek school and were amazing. I actually had the honour of meeting him, and I said to him, oh, wow. I grew up, wow. and my understanding of what the Hunda was like and living under it was from you. Yeah. Yeah, I just find, uh, you know what, I'll open up a, a different can of words if I open this, but we have to we have to definitely okay. discuss it. 